What's up guys, Africa James here, five-year expat here in Africa. And today I'm gonna to talk about my first time ever coming to Africa and what that experience was like. And I'm gonna have the adult version of this story on Patreon, but this is the PG version of it. So back in 2012, I was living in Japan. By that time I had been living in Japan for 13 years and I was sick of it, man. I mean, I might see a foreigner maybe once a month, twice a month in my little area where I lived there in Kobe at the time. And other than that, it was just Japanese 24-7. And I was curious about Africa. When I first came to Japan, I enjoyed I enjoyed my experience there because I, I was so intrigued by Japanese women at that time. But uh, after I had my fill of them, um, I found myself being more attracted to darker skinned women and black women too. And I'd very rarely, once in a while, see a black girl there in Japan. And um, I even, I actually even had a, a short relationship with an American chick, a, a black chick who lived in my, my neighborhood. So I got online and I researched where's the best country for a newbie to Africa to go to because there's so many countries in Africa and all the posts I was reading back then in 2012 were saying if you're a newbie to Africa Ghana is the easiest place to go to so I got on Facebook I made a Facebook group called Accra Friends and like 200 people joined, most of them women, but there were dudes in there too. I wanted to have friends on the ground when I landed. So I took this long ass flight. I flew from like Japan to Bangkok, Bangkok to Ethiopia, and then Ethiopia to Accra, Ghana. I got there and they somehow convinced me that I couldn't just walk out of the airport and get a taxi, which is what I wanted to do. And so I got corralled into this taxi that took me to my hotel and he ended up charging me like $25 when it should have only been $5. So that's a tip for you guys. You don't have to stay in the airport. You can walk out of the airport and just get a local form of transportation because they will rip you off. If, the, if, if they sense that it's your first time, they will rip you off. They ripped me off. So I got to my hotel and it looked like the carpet hadn't been vacuumed in 50 years. There was no soap in the bathroom, no towel, no toilet paper. Everything was dusty. I went down to the lobby and I told the guy, I'm like, man, I like, I, you knew I was coming, you know. Uh, what's up? Can you, can you at least give me some toilet tissue? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll go get you some, some toilet tissue. So that's that's the next thing I discovered about Africa is like they don't really have a sense of customer service. They don't have a huge tourist industry here. And they just like have no sense of like thinking or anticipating what a customer might need. Uh, I've experienced that even here in East Africa, too. So I stayed in my hotel that first night. And I, you know, to be honest, I was afraid to go outside. I mean, it was just like nothing I'd ever seen before. Dirt roads everywhere. Just, it was just a different world, man. And I slept that night. Woke up at like uh, four in the morning to some loud foreign language music on a megaphone. Or it was like a chant, actually. I didn't even know it at the time, but it was uh, called a prayer. It was a, like a Muslim prayer. That thing was like blasting into my room. It was right across the street. So I had that to look forward to every morning. Uh, but finally, I built up the courage to go outside and I walked around and man, as soon as I started walking around the streets, these young guys would approach me and they were very friendly and I thought that they wanted to be friends. Uh, but what they actually wanted was to show me around and give me a tour and then they wanted me to pay them. And even some dude came from way far away, like from another town, like half a day's drive away. He's like, I heard there was a, a white guy at this hotel. I'm here to work for you. 
and I was just like, I don't need anybody. You know, I don't, I don't want a tour guide. I don't want somebody on my back all day. I don't want someone on my nuts all the time. I just, I just want to do my own thing. And that's when I travel, I like to be independent and just do my own thing. I don't like tours and people corralling me to go to certain places and seeing certain things. I like to be on my own program. So I gracefully declined his services. By the second day, I was having severe diarrhea. I was nauseous and I was throwing up and I was so sick that the staff, the hotel staff had to take me to the hospital. I had severe food poisoning. I got to the hospital, you know, I told some of my Facebook group friends, you know, that I was in the hospital. So this one chick comes to check on me and I thought that was nice. And, you know, she sat by my bed for like an hour or two. And I was, you know, I was self-conscious because <laughs> I'm having diarrhea, I'm vomiting. Um, and then she left after a couple hours. And um, the next day, uh, another nice young lady came. Her name was Kukua. And she, and she was very gentle and sweet. When I went to check out of the hospital, uh, there was all the money that had been in my wallet was gone. And, you know, I was so stupid. I just left my wallet like on this counter next to my bed. And it was the first girl who came who took them, who stole the money. So I had to tell the whole, I had to tell the hospital staff what happened and they'd let me go without paying. And then I went to the bank and got the money and then paid them back. While Kukua, the nice girl, wasn't there, the head nurse who was treating me, she was like asking me questions and trying to get into my, <laughs> trying to get into my, into my, I don't know, into my world, I guess. And so she wanted to go on a date and I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, because I looked like crap. I looked like hell, you know. I lost like 15 pounds and I was just all really garish looking. And uh, anyways, I, I made it out of the hospital and, and I was in Ghana for, a, for about a month. And the whole time I was there, I kept getting food poisoning over and over again. It kept reoccurring. But that first bout was the worst. I had to be hospitalized. After that, I think I was taking antibiotics the whole time I was there. And I never regained my weight. Uh, I was just, a, you know, I just, I just had constantly had diarrhea and just, you know, I just kept going. I kept getting food poisoning over and over again. And I remember after that first bout of serious uh, food poisoning, I hadn't eaten in like three days. And I'm in my hotel, and they just brought me some bread, like literally just like, like three slices of bread. And a little packet of instant coffee. And I remember, I haven't eaten in three days. And I remember making this coffee and eating this bread and, and drinking this coffee. And it was just euphoric. It was just euphoric. I, that's don't, I, I just have that memory that it was euphoric. Because I hadn't eaten in three days. So it was wonderful. I, I was grateful for it. And I was there in the hotel, and ugh, I didn't understand, man. They, they had buckets, and you were supposed to put water in a bucket and pour water on yourself, which is just normal for me now because that's what I do here in East Africa. I met this guy. His name was Wisdom, and he was a, he was a wannabe rapper. You know, he, he had some tracks. He had made a video. He had produced a video. He was trying to get his music out. And uh, he lived near my hotel, and he wanted to hang out every day. But he was different than the other guys. He wasn't asking me for money. He would take me to lunch sometimes and pay for it. So I felt comfortable with him. He showed me how to eat with my hands. Like goat's meat was real popular there. So we would go to the restaurant and just like, it would be like goat's meat in this soup and you would just get in there with your hands and it'd be all over your hands, all over your face. And that's how they eat. But yeah, we would hang out. <laughs> I remember this one day, uh, he called me up and he's like, Ryan, I'm, I'm at such and such hotel, man. C come on over. I got some girls over here. So I went over to the room and he had hired two Nigerian escorts, really, really nice looking uh, girls. And and we were just hanging out in his room, smoking weed, listening to, 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 to music, to hip hop. 
the girls were like cuddling up against me. I remember, you know, it was nighttime and I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna bounce. I'm gonna go back to my hotel. He's like, hey man, it's dangerous out there. And I was like, I got a knife with me, I'm okay. And he laughed, he's like, <laughs> he's like, if, if you pull a knife on somebody, they're gonna grab your knife from you and use it against you. But I was okay, I made it back. And I, you know, I never felt like I was in danger as I was walking around Accra at night. And it's the same here. I'm in East Africa. I don't ever feel like my safety is being threatened. Okay, so I met this guy. And at this point, I didn't know that he was just hanging out because he wanted money. I thought he was just being friendly. He took me to this downtown area. And there was this road just lined with like a, a blanket every five feet. And there was a druggie on each one. And it was just this road just like, you know, as far as you could see. And it was all... These people just drugged out. I remember one day I was I was walking back from that area and I saw a guy and his feet were like swollen to twice the size they should have been. And he had literal holes in his feet that you could see through. And he wasn't begging for money or anything. And he just looked at, up at me in the most saddest way. And I, I gave him $10 and it, like he almost cried when I gave him that $10. I think I almost cried too. I would see guys on the road who didn't have legs and they would just be dragging themselves on the road trying to get money from the cars that were at the stoplights. I saw a lot of tough stuff, man. Stuff that, you know, most Western people aren't used to seeing. I would see I would see guys just go into these like sewage canals that ran through the city and they would just they would just squat right there and take a dump right there, right there, you know, in front of everybody. Just take a big dump right in this in these open sewage canals. Man, it was it was a different world for sure. In Ghana, it was my first time there. I'm a younger guy, you know. I was 32 when I was there. Uh, the girls were very conservative, so they would want to go on dates and go to restaurants, or I I would meet them at the clubs when I was out with Wisdom. I remember I met this one beautiful, beautiful girl from uh, Cote d'Ivoire and uh, I met her at the club and then we went out again and uh, another night to a bar and danced and had drinks. And then at the end of the night, she came back to my hotel with me and she said, oh, it's late. Uh, can I stay with you? She said, oh, no. It's like, I, I just I just want to spend the night, but I don't want to have sex. And so I said, okay, well, then you should probably get a taxi and go back home. And so she left. And then the next day I called up my friend Wisdom and I told him what happened. And he's like, bro, bro, she was just saving face. She was going to fuck you all night long. So yeah, I, I ended up making friends with uh, Kukua. I remember one night she, uh, I went out, we, we went to a hotel that was having like a Latin dance night. And I went with her, Kukua and Kukua's cousin and um, I remember when I was there, this this guy approached me, this this Ghanaian guy, young young kid in his twenties, and he 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 asked me where I was from, and he said, "Do they have gay people in America?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, I'm from San Francisco. They have a shit ton of them there." And he started asking me, he's like, "Well, like, can can they hold hands in public? Like, how is it over there?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man, they're pretty free over there." You know, because it's, it's different in Africa. They're, they're persecuted there. You know, you can go to jail. You can get beat up. You can get tortured for being gay. So he's like, oh, yeah. But I, he said, I'm not gay. I just want to know what it's like in America. I knew he was gay. And I said to him, I said, look, man, I know you're gay. And I feel bad for you, you know. Because can you imagine growing up in a country or a place where, you're, where your real identity is so oppressed by the outside society that you can't be your true self and you think you think that your true self is there's something wrong with you that you're either sick or evil that's that's what they make you believe right and i, I felt bad for the dude you know and i said hey man if you ever get a chance to to get outside of africa you know you can just be yourself man and you can be free and you're going to realize that you're normal and there's nothing wrong with you and I wanted to convey that to him so much, but that's really something that he's only ever going to know if he leaves Africa. And for that sake, that you know, that's what it's like here in East Africa as well, especially here in Uganda. You know, uh, 
uh, being gay, homosexual is criminalized here. So I, I feel bad. I feel bad for gay people in Africa. Yeah, Kukuo is wonderful. You know, she she would clean my clothes. She would take me places. She invited me to her house to to spend time with her family, to eat with her family. I remember one one day wisdom came and he met Kukua and afterwards he's like he's like do you like Kukua and I said yeah I like her I like her she's really nice and she's pretty too and wisdom said and I'll never forget these words he said well she's she's your typical bush monkey that's that's the term he used he called her a bush monkey and that what he meant by that is like she's like just a <laughs> A normal looking girl like an average looking African girl I think if you do go to Ghana you 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 can there is a possibility of meeting good sincere people but you're also gonna get these hustlers you really what you got to do is when you go to Ghana you got to have somebody you really trust there to show you the ropes and I would say that's the case for anywhere you go in Africa like if you're gonna come to East Africa and you want to hire me to keep you out of all types of trouble <laughs> You you need you need me or a person like me who has experience here. Yeah, that that first trip to Africa was really tough. I think I lost like twenty pounds. I had constantly had diarrhea. It was so hot there. You would just go out in the afternoon and just it would just be burning in the sun, and it was so dusty. But come to think of it, Uganda is even worse. <laughs> it's hotter and more dustier, but. You know, for a first time experience, that was a lot to take in. That was a lot to take in. Uh, just being hustled, constantly hustled by guys trying to befriend me, but then they wanted money. And then the climate and the dirtiness and the dustiness and the it, it just the, the non sanitation, people taking dumps in the sewage canals and right in plain sight and just. The, the the noise and the disorganization and yeah it was it was a lot to take in and I I remember I after that I flew to Thailand because I was gonna stay in Thailand for two weeks after that and I I thought Thailand was rough but when I got to Thailand I got down on my knees and I kissed the ground <laughs> that, that, that's how happy I was to leave Africa that first time and you know if. I'm glad I gave Africa a second chance. I didn't go back again for six more years until 2018. And that time I went to Kenya. And I had a completely opposite experience. Uh, I had a wonderful time in Kenya. I stayed in Kenya for three months. And since then I've been back to Kenya. I've traveled to Kenya and I absolutely love Kenya. And I don't know why people say that Ghana is the best first country to go to if you're going to Africa for the first time. I wouldn't recommend to go to Ghana for the first time. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you got any value from it, feel free to leave a super thanks or send me a PayPal donation. And you can see the adult version of this video on Patreon. And I have a lot of other videos on there too. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Deuces.